uh, this is a situation here. Uh, please email us at mothertruckernews at gmail.com, and we'll try to get to your questions as soon as possible, get you on the show. You know, you don't always got to be on video. You can be on a voice interview like this. But this driver is saying uh, that, uh, yeah, uh, they had a bad experience with Western Express. And now, again, this is their opinion, not mine. Uh, Roach Coach Motels uh, treated poorly, hair and food. Uh, has a trainer that uh, stole his wallet. Uh, and then gets out on the road doesn't get the pay that he was at, told. And then after that, uh, went and inspected a trailer, uh, four bad tires, bad brakes and all that. And, uh, dispatcher just said, Hey, uh, we're denying all that. Uh, we're just going to put some air in it. You got to keep on going, you know, uh, mother truckers, let's get into this interview, but yeah, uh, definitely 1000%, uh, protect your CDL, protect your life. And if someone wants you to do something, you are the captain of that ship. So you don't have to do it. Sometimes if you got to quit a job, you got to quit a job. Let's get into this video. This is truckers confessions. Hello. Hey, what's going on, brother? Not much. Just a uh, PSD from that damn Western Express. Oh man, I'm telling you. I mean, you know, we could leave you anonymous if you want, just to let people know, you know, the situation that's going on with you. So just to warn other people about, uh, you know, if they have a situation like that as well, you know. I mean, I man, I really, I don't care. You know, like I've been out here in this industry well before I started driving with my wife. Uh, I'm tired of this shit because it's not only my wife, it was my grandfather, everybody. All these major carriers are just getting to be out of control. And like, so it doesn't matter either one. It might be best to uh, leave me anonymous. I don't know because I don't know how RBX would handle that. No, I hear you. you. You got out there pretty well, I've all met it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so we'll, we'll leave it at that for now. You know, can you paint a picture and tell us, uh, you know, uh, what was your experience uh, uh, with Western Express and also um, what you would like other people to watch out for? Yeah, not a problem, man. That, that's easy. So I freshly got, I went from a diesel technician uh to working for Washington Express after what we left, me and my wife, uh, well, well, we separated, after we separated and all, I went to Western Express. Um, I went to, well, I called up Western Express because she was already working for Western Express. We were supposed to team drive with Western Express and we went our separate way. I still went ahead and went down to the terminal, Nashville, Tennessee. When I first started, February 20th, somewhere around there. Um, I've only was there for a short time a month because of what I dealt with. So I went down there in early February of 2023. And uh, I, after I got done with all that, I was promised 58 cents a mile to start, which I knew was going to probably be a lie. Uh, I was promised that. So that's one thing that I would say people need to watch out for is the pay. I was also promised 48 states. I was promised 14 on, three days off. And then once I, I was like, all right, cool. So they hired me, us, me, and they go through all that. They were supposed to pay for the $150 through truck driving school to the truck driving to school academy that I went through, um, they never paid the school. They'd never done any of that, like they said. I went through their orientation. Uh, their orientation, man, they were busting probably six, seven, eight hundred people in, it seemed like. These, I'm not sure of the numbers, but it just seemed like awful lot, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So uh, when there was two school buses, however many two school buses hold, one at 6.45, one at 6 o'clock. Uh, the hotel that we were in had roaches in it. No, no refrigerator, no microwave, nothing. Very dirty, very disgusting. So the whole time that you're there, you're kind of on ease. They would bring you three, three meals, you know, depending if it was weekend or what. So they would feed you. That was kind of nice. But the food, 
when you get your food, you'll find like hairs in it and stuff like that. So not very sanitary, I would say. So then you, when you get over to the orientation building, you go to your orientation, all that's the normal orientation. Then you go out with the trainer. And when you go out with the trainer, after you do all that, it's just weird how they do things. Uh, when I was out with my trainer, I literally had my laptop stolen. The trainer I literally stole my laptop. That he did not, but man, I, the laptop disappeared. Uh, the lab, my laptop disappeared. My credit card disappeared. Um, I was paying bills one morning, and the trainer that I was with was too busy focusing on what I was doing. I was in the bunk paying some of my household bills. Uh, and then after that, I went into the truck stop. I left my wallet to go to the bathroom. I left it in the truck. Uh, my credit card came missing. Well, after I looked at him, I said, I told you I'm canceling my credit card because I can't find my wallet or anything. So after that, my whole entire wallet came up and it, it appeared. He called me and said, hey, your wallet's on the floor in the truck. You know, now, do you think that was uh, something real or do you think uh, uh, your trainer uh, was trying to steal from you? Well, my trainer was trying to steal from me because of what I'm very specific how my cards are in my wallet by the categories and how much I use them, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So my cards were moved all the completely around. My driver license wasn't where they were. I'm pre I've got my wallet pretty much OCD when it comes to that. So I know how my that's set up. And what was weird is why would I put my wallet on his bed? Mm. No, seriously. So definitely <laughs> after you said, Hey, I'm canceling everything, you know, uh, you know, forget this uh, person that took my wallet. And next thing you know, it, it just appears out of nowhere. Right. Yep. You know, um, and then moving forward, what's going on with this? Were you still with your trainer when this tire situation happened that you emailed no. me about? No, there, this is what I'm, this is what I'm getting ready. To, this is all going to lead up to that. Um, uh, so I ran for a little bit. I was still having even more issues with breakdowns, stuff like that. Um, I went to the TA. The TA will no longer work on any of their vehicles because of the simple fact of, you know, the that they said they haven't paid. The mm -hmm. guy in the shop in there says that Western Express has not paid any of their bills, so they will no longer get that situated. Uh, so Western Express is jacking up on people's paychecks. I can't even afford to buy food on my next one. I'm sitting here in the hotel, and I can't afford to buy food because of how bad they got everything. Uh, they're not paying their bills. They're not paying people. They're nothing. And when I was work, I was running 3,000, 2,000 miles, 2,500 miles, and my checks only reflect 1,000, so, which is not true. And my checks were only like three, $400 a week. Mm. And so that's not even enough to live on the road, but so they would never fix it. So what slid up to that is I got dispatched onto a load. Well, I got dispatched onto a load. I went there to pick it up. It was 190 miles away from there. So, the, and this is what got me to a point where I was getting ready to quit. I was already having issues, but I'm like, okay. So well, I went over to get the load. I got laughed at. They had a brand new account. I got laughed at in, in Kansas uh, because the load that they put me on was a flatbed load, not a drive van. I was doing drive van. Prior to that, they had me buy parts and straps. They had me stop at Kansas City when I clearly told them that I was drive van. I said, why do I need parts? They said, just stop. Shut up and just stop. Do what we say. They had me send in a money code. They sent me a money code for the straps and tarps. Never got my money back for those. And, uh, yeah. So that's then crazy they, right there. Yeah. So they knew you had like, uh, I don't want to say zero, but you know, you don't do flatbed, right? Is that correct? I don't do flatbed. I do drive. And they wanted you to take a flatbed load with zero experience. Yeah. Was, they wanted to put the, what they wanted to do is they wanted to put the, whatever they make, they're inside the uh, the drive van. 
And I was like, the shipper and the receiver said, no, they're using our concrete corn. Mm. And so, like, no. You're not putting concrete corn inside of a dry van. I'm sorry. It's not happening. <laughs> Craziness. So, yeah, that's so that entirely when I just said, you know what? I said, if you got to let me go right now, let me go right now because I'm not running that load. There ain't no way you're doing that to me. So, uh, after that, everything started going downhill tremendously and fast and in a hurry. So, obviously, I pissed somebody off. So, that leading up to that, as things got worse, and I didn't even get my money back for that. I wouldn't, they wouldn't, they stopped paying and reimbursed me for the scales. If I would get away and take it, it was my fault. I was a complete company driver and not lease, nothing. Complete company. I couldn't get money back to, uh, you know, sit there and pay for the way to the tickets. I had to pay for my own skills to make sure that I was legal in the way to send the weight. So that being said, after that, everything just started going downhill. So that trailer that I reached out to you, that was my final load. I put in a notice uh, Monday. That that following Monday, now that we're into a following Friday, Thursday, Friday, I said, look, I need to be back at Nashville by by Friday morning because I need to quit. I'm done. I said, I want to return your equipment. I want to return everything. So they told me the load I was on, do not drop your load that day. And so I went ahead and dropped the load because I was five miles away. Why not try to drop the load? I dropped the load that I was currently on, went over to the other load. That's where I found that trailer. Uh, I sent in a DVR because when I showed that it got there, I had four bad tires, the tandems went in the slide, and I had a really bad air leak. So the tandems were all the way back, and I had 34000 into the trailer. So... Obviously, the tandems need to be adjusted then make them right. Uh, so that being said, I slid the, was trying to get that done. I got into the truck. I put the DVR in. Uh, so the guy, the on-call guy came out, followed me back to the truck stop, followed me back to the, you know, the truck stop. He said, this is a little too much repair that needs to be done. Other than doing it on the road, let's get you back to the shop. Uh, because at that time it needed brakes and the brakes were out of adjustment, three quarter inch of out of adjustment because of what Western Express has been doing. This is a big thing that I want people to be aware of. They're not fixing the brakes. What they're telling the shop to do is adjust, adjust, adjust. Then instead of, you know, fixing the S cans and the, all the other stuff, they're telling them to adjust it. Mm. And so making all this stuff out of the adjustment. Now the driver, they're hiring brand new drivers right out of school that doesn't even know what to do. And when I was with trainers and all, the trainers, the only thing they did is go to sleep. They didn't teach them how to drive. They didn't teach them how to back. They went to sleep. That's what they did. And uh, over there, when that guy followed me over, he was telling me about what, how he was working for Western Express and how his trainer just went to sleep. After getting back to the Love Truck Stop, I sat in Bay 3 on the outside of their shop. Um, they told me they, de they denied every bit of the work, told me that I better get there or they were going to kick me out and abandon me. When I, so they denied everything completely. They wouldn't even do anything. The only thing they told them that the Loves to do that they could do is put air in the tire. That's, That's crazy. All they were. And so... At that point, you know, I wanted to reach out to you and because I wanted you to, to make this known because this is why Western Express is getting people killed by the thousands. And that sucks, but people just need to stay away from Western Express because, man, I, even coming in and working at the terminal, I've, I've seen breaks on these trailers from pulling different trailers. I've seen them snap in half. Springs, calibers, everything snapped in half, pins broke. Their policy is if it rolls, it goes to the shop. I literally have been told that. 
if it rolls, it can go to the shop. That's crazy. That's a little nuts. Don't you think? <laughs> oh, no, it's definitely crazy. So, you know, uh, for people that are thinking about going to Western Express, you know, this is a, you know, uh, a truck driver's experience here is uh, basically uh, Roach Coach Motels, a little bit of hair in the food. You might get a trainer that uh, might steal from you. But again, that, that could happen from anywhere. That's just your experience. Um, uh, definitely uh, doesn't promise on the pay. And then it looks like if you got four bad tires or even some bad brakes, uh, they deny it all and try to get you to still keep on rolling. And we have some of the dispatchers uh, uh, text screenshotted that I could share, correct? You can share it. Okay. No, I will. I will. You know, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's very un unfortunate. And, you know, I, I think for all the listeners out there that will be watching this, remember it's your CDL, it's your life. Uh, if they, if anyone tries to force you to do anything, you don't have to do it. Uh, doing what this driver does here and quitting to find another job is pretty much your best bet. If not, then definitely, uh, let the FMCSA know about how the motor carrier is doing and what they're doing, but do not do something just because your dispatcher tells you to do it. Would you agree? Yeah, but I would totally agree. But even when I called the DOT, I called the DOT in Virginia. The DOT told me to park the truck and this was messed up. I tried to get DOT's help, but I DOT wouldn't even cover the truck stop because it was on private property. He told me that I needed to either run the, just shut the truck up, lock it up, and quit, or I could try to chance it and run it because there's nothing he can do. Wow. That was the worst. That was from the words from the DOT. He said, I can only help you if you're on a scale. That's crazy. That's crazy, you know. So, no, I appreciate you for sharing your story. And, you know, I'll get the word out so people will know. Uh, this is now, again, uh, I like to play devil's advocate. And if there's any Western Express drivers, uh, tell us your experience uh, down below. Comment down below and let us know if your experience is the same experience or if you actually had a great experience, you know. Um I know it's an extremely big company, so there's got to be at least one person out there that's had a great experience. You know, um, I, I'd love to hear what they have to say as well. But I've been hearing a lot of bad, more bad than good. So, you know, I appreciate you for jumping on the show. Yep. Thank you. Have a good one. Yeah, you too. Have a great weekend. Okay. Hey, everyone be safe out there. Yes, sir. One. Bye.